It is very common asking for approval in a release pipeline, especially when deploying to important environments like QA, pre-prod, production, etc. Azure Pipelines has a feature to do so, and it comes in two different flavors, pre-deployment and post-deployment approvals. But what is the difference between those two and why it matters? Let's discover it together. This is the 3 minutes series. Hi everybody, welcome back to Coder Dave and welcome to a new episode of the 3 minutes series. In each episode, I try and explain a concept, showcase a product or a service, or yet teach you something and all in just three minutes. Short videos, big value, hopefully. Before we start, take a minute to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Just click on the subscribe button below right now and turn on the notifications so you will not miss any other videos like this. Today, we talk about the release flow control using approvals and more specifically about the different behavior that the pre-deployment approval and the post-deployment approval have when using Azure Pipelines. Today's video applies only to the classic release pipeline experience, because with the multi-stage YAML pipeline, you can only define some generic approval at environment level, and those are de facto pre-deployment approval. I've already made a video about Azure DevOps environments, which covers also the approvals for YAML pipelines. You can find the link in the video description and up here. I encourage you to check that out if you are into YAML pipelines. All right, so you're using classic release pipelines and want to ask for approval. Should you use the pre or the post deployment approval? And what are the differences between those two? Let's start the clock and get into it. I have here this very simple release pipeline that contains two stages, stage one and stage two. What I want to do is enable the post-deployment approval on stage one and the pre-deployment approval on stage two. To enable the post-deployment approval on stage one, we just click on the user icon over here and click on enable. Now we can add an approver. I just add myself. And it's nice to know that I can set a timeout for the approval to happen. So if no one approves within this time frame the job is automatically rejected. Let's close this. And now let's enable the pre-deployment approval on stage two. Once again, let's click on the icon over here, collapse this and enable the pre-deployment approvals. I add myself again, close and save. And we know that we have the approval in place because now we have this small check next to the user. Let's see what happens if we start a new release. Let's create a new release and let's see in the logs. Stage one is queued. Now the stage one is in progress, so it's deploying. And now it's done, so it's pending approval. If you already use release pipelines, you will notice immediately that the stage is not yet marked as completed. And this is even more evident if we go back to the dashboard in which we see that the stage is still blue, which means in progress. But if we go to the logs, we'll see that all the deployment actually succeeded and it's completed. This is, I think, the biggest difference between post-deployment approvals and the pre-deployment approvals. Because as you can see now, in the post-deployment approvals, the stage is not marked as completed until you approve. And this makes sense because maybe you wanna check if the deployment is successful before actually marking it at complete. So let's go on and approve it. I can leave a comment, looks good to me, and approve. If we go back, now we see that the stage is actually marked as complete because it's green and same thing is here. And stage two now is the one waiting for approval. And if we go to the logs, we see that nothing has been deployed because we are waiting for a pre-deployment approval. Let's approve it, approve. And now you'll see that the deployment will start. And it's also immediately clear if you look at the UI that the approvals have been granted because now they are marked in green and we are just waiting for maybe the agent to pick the job up and so on and so forth. Now the stage is in progress. And as you can see, as soon as it finishes, it's marked as green and succeeded. And same thing in the dashboard. So to answer the question, what is the difference? With the post-deployment approval, you deploy, then ask, for approval, and in the meantime, the stage is not marked as completed. When you do approve, then this is marked as succeeded and everything can continue. With the pre-deployment approval instead, you need first to mark it as approved and only then the deployment will proceed and will be marked as succeeded as soon as it finishes. As you've seen, the behavior between those two is pretty different. So when to use one or the other? Here are some scenarios for you. 
Let's say you have a scenario in which some users must manually validate the changes you requested or approve the deployment to a stage. In this case, you want it to be done before deploying, right? So you will use a pre-deployment approval. If instead you want some user to validate or sign out the deployment before the release is promoted to other stages, you can use the post-deployment approval. And this is very common when you want to, for example, deploy to QA and having the QA manager signing off the deployment before the testers can start testing the release. There are other scenarios though, which may not require post or pre-deployment approvals, but rather using gates. For example, when you want to ensure that there are no issues or work items or problems in a system before building and deploying to a stage, you don't need a manual approval. You can use gates in Azure pipelines. Or maybe you want to ensure there are no incidents in that specific environment before promoting the deployment to a new stage Again, you can use gates to do that automatically. Last but not least, maybe you want to wait for a specific time before prompting the user for a manual sign out or approval. In that case, you can use again gates with either post or pre-deployment approvals. I really hope it's clearer now when to use pre and post deployment approvals and what are the differences between those two. Let me know in the comment section below which one you prefer, the pre or the post deployment approval and which one you use more in your organization. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I see you in the next video here at Coder Dave.